What's up? I'm Vin, and today I want to take a look at the 2010 Calc A, B, and B, C question number one. So let's get started. And for this question here, some of the important information we have is that there's no snow on Janet's driveway when snow begins to fall at midnight. So that's our initial condition. And then from midnight to 9 a.m., snow accumulates at a rate modeled by F of T. So it's very important that we identify that F of T is a rate of change. And we're also told that at 6 a.m., Janet starts to remove snow at a rate modeled by G of T, and the function G of T is piecewise, and it's written over here. So now to answer this question, for part A, we want to know how much snow has accumulated by 6 a.m. So for this, we have to know that the accumulation function is F of T, but F of T is the rate that snow accumulates. So that means we're going to do the integral of F of T, because remember, the integral of the rate is the net change of the function. So f of t is measured in cubic feet per hour. The units for dt is hours because that represents a small change in time. So when you multiply these two, it's just going to give you cubic feet, which once again represents how much snow has fallen over the given time interval. So now we just have to choose the correct limits. By 6 a.m. means our upper limit is 6. And remember, t represents the number of hours since midnight. So at midnight is going to be t equals 0. So now we just go over to the calculator here. And if we type this in the y1 over here, we have 7x e to the cosine x. We're just going to replace t with x. And when we go back to the main screen, I could, when I go to my integral, I press math 9. We're going from 0 to 6. I could retype it again, just write 7 times x and then e to the cosine x. Or if I wrote it once in the y1 spot, I could press vars, hit the right arrow, go to function, and hit y1. And now it's just saved in here nice. And we just press enter. And our answer to part A to the nearest thousands place is going to be 142.275 cubic feet. So this is how much snow has fallen up until 6 a.m. Now for part B, what we want to know is what is the rate of change in the volume of snow at 8 a.m.? So the concept that we need for this question, if we're referring to the volume of snow, the volume of snow on the driveway is going to be equal to the snow that accumulates minus the snow that Janet removes. So if we want to find the rate of change of this, if we want to find the rate of change of the volume, then we're going to do the rate that snow accumulates minus the rate that snow is removed. And if we think about this in the context of the question, the rate that snow accumulates is f of t minus the rate that snow is removed is modeled by g of t. So for part b, what we need to do, if we want to find out what is the rate of change of volume of snow at 8 a.m., we're going to do f of 8 minus g of 8, and that's going to tell us the rate of change of the volume of snow. So now f of 8 we're going to get by just plugging into the function. So we have 7 times 8, and then we're going to have e to the cosine of t, but remember t is equal to 8. And then we're going to subtract g of 8. But to find the value for g of 8, we look at the intervals, and 8 falls between 7 and 9. So g of 8 is going to be equal to 108. So that's what we're subtracting here. And this answer is coming out negative. We have, to the nearest thousands place, we have negative 59.583. And the units for the rates are cubic feet per hour. So they didn't ask us to interpret this in the context of the question, but what this tells us is that at 8 a.m., the volume of snow on the driveway is decreasing at this rate, which means that Janet is actually making progress. She's shoveling snow away faster than it's falling, so she's getting snow off the driveway. Now for part C, we want to write a function h of t, which represents the amount of snow that Janet removed from the driveway t hours after midnight, and we're looking at the interval from 0 to 9. Now h is going to be a direct follow-up from g of t, and for this question, I looked at some of the sample student responses, and there were students that got full credit for just an algebraic answer to this. So if we want to write a function for h of t, we just have to think about this very, very carefully. And another student that had lost points here, they had a very good idea for how to start this. However, they just weren't careful with the very specific detail. So what they did was they just took the antiderivative of all of these pieces. And if you think about it, the antiderivative of 0 would be 0t plus a constant. But they just wrote 0, which makes sense in the context of the question because Janet removes no snow from, from midnight to 6 a.m. 
So this idea is consistent with the word problem. However, for this next interval, they weren't careful and they said the antiderivative of 125 is just 125t and they labeled everything else here. I'm just gonna leave a space so we can see what the actual result is. But then they said, okay, this is true from on the interval from six to seven, where t is between six and seven. But the problem with this, think about this very, very carefully. At 6 a.m., Janet, re Janet removes no snow at all. There is zero cubic feet that Janet has removed, so it's just the snow that accumulated. But then exactly one hour later, Janet is removing snow at a constant rate. So she removes 125 cubic feet per hour from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. So that means when one hour goes by, she removes exactly 125 cubic feet. So at something like 6.30, a half hour goes by, she will have removed exactly half of this amount, which is 62.5. So now think about this very carefully. The problem with modeling this middle section here with just 125 times t is that 6.30 corresponds to 6.5 hours after midnight. So if we were to plug in 6.5 here, 125 times 6.5 is definitely going to be more than this number here. So that model is not going to work. But what will work is if we shift this over. If we attach minus 6 to t, now when we plug in t equals 6.5, 6.5 minus 6 is a half, and when we multiply 125 by 1 half, then we'll get that 62 and a half that we need. So the key is to shift it over to the beginning of the interval, and then the problem is going to work out. So that's what we're going to have to do for the rest of this here. And think about this very carefully. At 7 a.m., there is exactly 125 cubic feet of snow that Janet has removed from the driveway. So for this last line here, what we could say is that there is already progress being made, that Janet already removed this much snow, 125 cubic feet of snow, and next, we're going to look at the antiderivative of 108 is 108 times t, but we don't want to fall in the same trap that, you know, we almost fell in before. We have to think about how we're going to write this very carefully, and it's going to have something to do with the fact that we're on the interval from 7 to 9 now. So if we think about this carefully, we're going to start this at t minus 7, because if I were to plug in 7, 7 minus 7 is 0, which cancels this out and leaving us with just 125, which is how much snow we should have at 7 a.m. So this is our function here in piecewise form here, and this is going to help us answer the rest of the question. So now for part D, what we want to answer for this is we want to know how many cubic feet of snow are on the driveway at 9 a.m. But remember what we said before the volume of snow is equal to the snow that accumulates minus the snow that's removed. So for part D, we have to answer two things. We have to know how much snow accumulates by 9 a.m. And it's the same reasoning as part A, except now we're going to do the integral from 0 to 9 of f of t. So this is going to tell us the first part, how much snow accumulates, but we have to subtract it by the amount of snow that Janet removes from the driveway, and notice we just wrote a function for this. So we want to know how much snow does Janet remove from the driveway at 9 a.m. That's going to correspond to t equals 9. So we're going to evaluate the function h at t equals 9, and the rest we're just going to plug into the calculator. So we're going to do math 9. The limits are going from 0 to 9, and we have the function y1 is still saved as f of t, or in our case we put it as f of x. And then what we're going to do next is subtract, and we'll put parentheses because there's more than one term. We're going to evaluate h of t at t equals 9. That means it's going into the last row. We're going to have 125 plus, and we're going to have 108 times. And if, I, if we plug in 9 here, we're going to plug in 9. We have 9 minus 7 is 2. So we're multiplying this by 2. And this is going to give us our final answer here. And if we round to the nearest thousands place. This is going to give us 26.335 cubic feet, and this is our final answer. Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on question one from the 2010 AP test. If you found this video to be helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel, and if you've got any requests, leave the topics you want me to cover in the comments section below. And thanks for watching.